Linda, over to you. Are you ready? Yep. Right. Share yes. screen. Right, well, thank you for inviting me. It's it's lovely to see so many faces. I recognise a few, but, but perhaps not all of you. Um, I was asked to, to come and talk about uh, my life as an artist and as an illustrator this afternoon. Um, uh, and really, I suppose the, the story starts way back in the mid-60s when I went to a little art school down on the south coast of England um, to study fine art, uh, which is what I did for about two and a half years. Um, but I have always had a strong interest in um, things that actually the art school weren't very happy about me being interested in. In other words, um, I was very fond of drawing animals. Um, I wasn't so keen on doing life drawing, uh, although I did a lot of it. Um, and I just began to feel increasingly uncomfortable after about two years that maybe fine art wasn't the, quite the right place to be. Um, although I enjoyed painting and I always have. Um, so I went to talk to my principal and he said, why don't you do an illustration course? Um, which I, I did for the next two to three years. So my career has been split really uh, in being an illustrator, which I was for 35 years. Um, but I've always taught painting. Yes, thank you very much. I've always enjoyed uh, both sides of it really. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, and show you some pictures. Um, uh, about how I actually started um, as an illustrator. Um, you'll see I've got some strange letters after my name. Uh, um, that means I'm a member of the Society of Industrial Artists and Designers, which, which was um, originally started by people like Paul Nash. Um, and it's for people who work in industry as well as just uh, as painters. So the first picture is this. Now, I got my first break. It's very, very difficult to actually get into um, publishing uh, as an illustrator because there's a sort of catch-22, um, which is you come out of art school and you have a lovely portfolio of stuff and you go and see a publisher and they say, have you had anything published? And you say, well, uh, no, I've just come out of art school. <laughs> and they say, well... Um, well, we'll let you know we've got when we might we might have something, but we'll we'll, we'll contact you. And of course, they don't. Um, it's very important um, if you're an illustrator that the publisher can trust what you do. Um, you can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't keep to a deadline, if your work doesn't print very well um, for whatever reason, maybe the, the technique that you're using. Um, the publisher will not be able to use you um, and a deadline is the most important part of your life uh, as an illustrator because uh, when you are illustrating you are really just somebody in a chain of other people um, who are actually producing a book and books uh, when you met when the publisher uh, publishes a book they have an appointment with um, the, the the illustrator has the deadline, um, the work then goes to a repo house, which is photographed, that's, that's the thing to date. So is the printer, so is the binder and the finisher. And so it, everything really depends on deadlines, always. So you need to kind of break into it. And the way I got in was an enormous stroke of luck. You'll have heard of Oliver Postgate and Peter Furman, who did Bagpuss and the Clangers. Um, and they also did something called Pogles Wood. And Peter Furman, um, I, I was lucky enough to meet, and he was actually looking for an illustrator to help him with his Christmas annuals. He used to um, publish um, Pogles Wood annuals um, every year. And I mean, there were Bagpuss and Clangers ones. Um, but this was the very first picture that I did for the for the Pogleswood annual. And those of you who remember Pogleswood will 
at the little characters at the bottom, and um, I made a hor an horrific mistake. Um, if you're uh, if you're sharp enough to see, um, the poor old horse is having its horseshoe put on backwards. <laughs> oh yes, oh, yeah. nobody nobody actually spotted. <laughs> Um, that was done in gouache, uh, using ink and gouache. So you have to be very careful if you are doing an illustration that when it ends up in print, it's got to be accurate. Um, but actually, I got away with it. Nobody spotted it. <laughs> um, however, on the next one, uh, once I'd worked with Peter and Oliver, it opened a lot more doors for me. So I was able to turn up to publishers with stuff I'd had printed. I could show them the annuals, and I began to get more work. And this was a, a little book I did for Macmillan. Mm. And I'm showing it to you because um, it has a curious story attached to it in the sense that um, if you make a mistake, you it, 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 that's not a good thing to do. Um, basically, this was a story about a little boy who goes to stay with his grandma in the country, and she has a cottage, and there it is on the front page it was a it was a picture book more or less with a few a little and um cottage appears two or three times in the book and i did all the artwork i kept to the deadline i sent everything off to the publisher three weeks later it all came back no. because the managing director had counted the tiles on the cottage roof and they were not <gasps> the same <laughs> And so I had to redo it. Oh. So that taught me a bit of a lesson. Because <laughs> he said any child would pick it up. Well, I'm not sure they would. But actually, you know, it was a very salutary lesson. So that's why that's in there. Um, the previous two pictures were done in gouache, which doesn't print quite as well as this method, which is line and wash. And, of course, I teach <coughs> Like line and wash and a lot of my illustration work was done in, in using pen and ink and watercolor because that reproduces yeah. well so that's a, a story about a little girl and a, and a rocking horse mm. um, and inside the book was Thanks, most of the illustrations were black and white because when I started uh, printing was not quite as advanced as it is now and so it's much cheaper to produce a book that had black and white illustrations, in, especially for children who could just read. <clears throat> so they could a picture book. But I've included this because um, uh, when you're illustrating, you have to use reference. And the reference for this was my husband when younger. He doesn't quite look like that now. Um, but so I was able to use him as a model. Um, and this this was it had to be like, <laughs> done in anything line no no color no half tone it had to be done in line so he was the model for that um so the model for this one so um you know when you are drawing you you uh, you have to stylize and this was a giant um and so i i had him posed at the other end of the room looking a little bit like that but not quite <laughs> Um, so he, he got used to being used as a model. Um, he got absolutely worse and worse. <laughs> um, uh, this is a story about some mice and a giant and some treasure. So this all had to be done in black and white line um, and uh, had, to, had to fit the page with the text. So I would be given on my brief, say 15 pages worth of illustration to split up through the book. Um, and it, working in black and white line, I mean, many of you I know work in, in pen and ink. I couldn't use any form of half tones. So all my half tones and darks had to be done by cross hatching with ink. So um, you can see a, 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 the cat in the picture and the background all done using hatching and hatching. And by golly, it did you wrist in. <laughs> but um, it was an interesting way to work. And in many ways, I enjoy the discipline of working in black and white because it really does make you um, as creative as you can be. Um, so this is a cat confronting a little mouse. Um, 
I put this in because um, if you look carefully, uh, this is a double page spread, so the book is open and the illustrations on both sides. If you look carefully, there's two mouse traps in that village street. Can you see them? Um, and thereby hung a tail because we lived in a little village at the time in Kent and there was a hardware store. Um, and I, I don't like catching mice in traps. I think it's awful. Um, but I needed a mouse trap because that was, in, that was in the story and I didn't know what they looked like. So I went along to the hardware store and said, could I borrow a mouse trap? And um, she was very good, Mrs. Baird. She actually said, well, yeah, if you don't use it. And I said, no, 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 I really just want to draw it. So they very kindly lent me a mouse trap, which actually never got used. So I just drew with it. Um, so there it is in, in, uh, in pen and ink. Um, sometimes I got some really, really interesting things. And this was a, um, a, a book about the, the, the life story of Pavlova, the, 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 the ballet dancer. And that was, that was great to do because the research I had to do, I had to find photographs of Pavl Anna Pavlova. Um, and again, it had to be done in black and white. So it, it, it was quite a challenge, but a very, very enjoyable book to do. Um, you do get typecast, actually, a bit like actors. And I got known as the person who did, you know, rather funny animals. Um, this was a story about a little pig who ran away from the farm. And there he is staring in absolute horror at some pig's trotters in a butcher shop window. So he's, um, he's not too happy about what he's seeing. Um, and... Uh, this, this is uh, a book which was extremely popular when it when it came out. Um, a book by Dick King Smith, who's sadly no longer with us, but a, a very fine author. Um, and it's about a little hedgehog who um, gets hit on the head, so he can't pronounce his name properly. So he calls himself a hedgehog. Um, that was the cover to the book. But inside. Um, are all these little hedgehogs. Um, and when you're illustrating, you've got to research um, your subject. And there's no way I could lay hands on a hedgehog easily. I could have used photographs, but I wanted them in different positions and I, I couldn't find the reference I wanted. So I went to my local museum, which had um, a, a, box, a whole sort of... Um, display of stuffed animals and they very kindly took all these little stuffed hedgehogs out of the the display um, and I was able to draw them uh, in different positions for a whole morning but the poor little souls they were just delightful but they all had little spikes through their tummies that made them stand up so they were useful to draw but a bit grisly really <laughs> <laughs> so there, there they all are in again in pen and ink um, and another double page spread with them all sat by um, flower pots which take an awful long time to do because you can see where the, the hatching is involved um, but it does build up into a tonal picture. Mm. This is one of my kind of absolute favourite books because I'm, I'm a very much a cat person. Um, this is the translation into French of the picture book I did for Collins, which um, was called When the People Are Away. And it's a story about what happens when people go away on holiday and leave their cats um, to be fed by a neighbour. And of course, every night these cats got up to no good of one sort or another. And um, I just really enjoyed doing this. It was a picture book in line and wash. And there's a little cat streaming in for a party into the into the into the empty house, um, and these were the end papers, um, uh, absolutely full of cats. Uh, I had a cat at the time called Pentecost, which is actually sitting um, almost just under halfway down. He's and he's he's black and he's got his eye on you. And there he is. Uh, yeah, he uh, he became a film star, but I'll talk about that later. Um, so those were the end papers um, just inside the book. 
I put this one in because there's a story that, com that comes with this one. This is one of the double page spreads from the book where they're all going in for their party. And there's a man who's obviously just come back from the pub. Can you see him leaning on the, on the fence there? And he's got a bottle in his hand. Now, when uh, a publisher produces books, they want to as much as possible to sell the foreign rights to it. And you saw the cover of, of this book when it was translated to French. They sold it to the French. But they also sold this book to the Americans. And when they did, um, I had a, uh, I was told by the, my editor that I would have to do this picture again because the Americans had objected to having a drunk in the picture. So you can carry a gun in America and shoot people, but you mustn't show pictures of drunk people. So, so for a hundred pounds, I had to redo it again without the man on the fence. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, strange things happen when you when you sell to foreign places. Um, so there they all are. Um, and one night they one night they had all in wrestling, and uh, these are the cats on their way to the wrestling match. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's just great fun, <laughs> just dividing, finding the personalities in cats. Um, so they're being very fierce. Uh, I, this is another illustration from the book. And I'm showing this because um, sometimes you can get stuck for a composition. And sometimes it's difficult to, to pull a picture together. And one of the one of the not it's not actually a trick, but it's a really interesting thing to do, is uh, go to a famous painting and pinch its composition. And I did this for the cats. And I don't know if any of you can guess it, but as you're muted, you'll have to tell me afterwards. But I'm going to tell you now anyway. Um, that's what I based it on, uh, Les Parapluies. So the lady at the front becomes the cat having his tail wrung out by a kitten um, as he arrives for a musical evening. Um, right. Uh, this was one of a very successful run of books. I did eight books about a little boy called Simon and his friend who was called The Witch. And Simon and the Witch went to eight books um, Jack and Nori did it as a, uh, a story. If you're familiar with Jack and Nori, it was a program on for children on BBC about sort of four o'clock, I suppose, where there was a narrator and it was it was kind of illustrated as well. Um, and uh, this character ended up on Jack and Nori, and they also dramatised it with a lovely actor called Elizabeth Spriggs, who played the the witch um but uh and there's there's another one of the books that uh, all about her and she's got a cat there um called george who has she never feeds and she he has to either eat furniture or, or telephone directories um but they they nowhere in the book said what she looked like now people kind of tend to think witches have got you know pointy hats and look like witches all it said in the book, in the description of the author ever gave, was that she looked like a funny old lady. Um, and so she does. And there she is. Um, but she's got some slightly unusual things, like she's got skull hat pins, and round her neck was a dead chicken as a sort of fur, you know, feather tippet. You see the chicken's legs hanging down there. But I had to base her on, on something, um, and I actually based her on on two people. One, one was my grandma, bless her, and the other one was a lovely um, uh, old actress called Margaret Rutherford. Um, and so she became this very slightly stout old lady, but with very curious clothes and a handbag, which she occasionally kept her cat in or, or her magic wand. Um, and there's her cat. Um, mm -hmm. This is this is a this is a case of um, of I don't know nature imitating art I think really because um, 
we had a cat called Pentecost who um, he was called Pentecost because he walked into church on Pentecost Sunday and he on Whit Sunday and he was a stray um, into the church where my husband was vicar in Kent um, and we adopted him and he was an extraordinary cat but the curious thing was I'd drawn this cat before he appeared and he was a fluffy black cat who looked just like that as a stray when we adopted him and took him in. Um, but he became a film star because um, when I was working for Jack and Ori, the producer um, had him stow away in his car when he was going back to London with the, with the illustrations I'd done for it. He said, would he, would he come and sit with Neris Hughes while she reads the stories on Jack and Ori? And he did. Uh, and he got paid for it. <laughs> so there he is. Um, and, um, there she is with him in a in a shopping basket. One of the things that you have to do, um, I'm just going to go back this this one in a minute, is that when you're using black and white and you can't use colour, you've got to be as resourceful as you can. And if you look uh, on the um, on his fur, I've used finger fingerprints um, to to increase the sort of scruffy aspect of him. Um, and using textural marks is very important to try and make the drawing as interesting as possible. There they all are. But unfortunately, as I said, you get typecast. So after that, I, I got some more witch books to do about different witches, not, not the same witch at all. So this is a more traditional one, uh, a bit more glamorous, um, but she also has a cat. So um, uh, there they are. That was a lovely book to illustrate. Um, the book club decided to um, reissue the, Wiz the Wizard of Oz and asked me to do some sample um, illustrations and I got chosen to illustrate it and it was just great fun to do. Um, but it had challenges. Um, for a start, if you just go back to, I'll just go back to this, this, the, the cover, the little girl down there, I didn't really want her to look like Judy Garland because that wouldn't be quite right. The, you know, that's as a film, it's just as it is. So I, um, there was a little girl who lived in our village. who was about the right age. And I asked her and her mum if, she would come and pose for me. So these are the sort of preparatory drawings that have to be done to actually find the character uh, of, the, of the, the person that you want to, to draw. Um, so uh, as, uh, when you're drawing a character, you have to, you have to define it and, and do lots of preparatory work and drawings. So you get to know your character and you can draw them in any situation so they still look the same person. Um, and that, there's the little girl who came and posed for me, who's now a mum of <laughs> two children herself. So she's, yes, it's a long time ago. Um, but uh, there she is with her, I don't know if you remember the story of the Wizard of, of Oz, but this is the beginning of the book when uh, she's, her uncle's sitting on the doorstep and they're watching the storm come up in Kansas that begins, that takes her away to Oz. And they're looking a little worried. Now, her her uncle in there actually was her great uncle. Um, and he is looking very worried. And the reason behind that is because I, um, I, I knew her great uncle. He lived in the same village. And I met his wife when um, one one morning when I was looking, when I was working on the book, and I said, do you think John would come and and uh, pose for me because I need someone to sit, you know, that I can draw for this book? Well, all she told him was, Lin, uh, Lin, Linda wants you to, to come and pose for her. And, <laughs> and he came and he sat, sat there. And if you look, he doesn't look happy at all. Um, I mean, he sat perfectly well for me. Uh, and I drew him and, and, and Rosemary. Um, afterwards, I discovered that he was terribly worried because he thought that I was going to ask him to take his clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's why he looked so anxious, because his wife hadn't explained it properly to him. Um, but they, they made two very good models. That was nice. <laughs> and there's the munchkins with um, with the little dog Toto. Um, 
sometimes you get some really weird things to do. Um, this was a, this is a skeleton's three leg two uh, 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 three legged race, and unfortunately they've fallen to bits. Well, at least one of them has. So um, yeah, that was very curious, but great fun to do. Um, this is this is a this is a book about um, animals in a jungle, um, and uh, there's two tigers having breakfast, and and Mrs. Tiger's trying to attract Mr. Tiger's attention um, um, at the at the breakfast table. And there's all the little elephants that were in the in the book. I mean, I I've just had a great time being an illustrator. It's just been such fun. Um, you know, it it's. Uh, it's, it's really nice to be able to say you've 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 had a job that you really enjoyed doing, and I have and I did. Mm -hmm. But I also painted, and when we moved up north here, uh, I took myself over to Appleby Horse Fair, and this is one of the paintings that I did from the fair. Oh, so it's a little bit blurry. That's my bad photography on this one. Um, it's, it's been great. Um, this is App Appleby New Fair, she's painted. Oh, yeah. It's Appleby Horse Fair, where they go every year, except they couldn't do it last year, and I don't know if they'll do it this year. Um, but there's lots to see there. And I sat drawing on the bank for a long time and developed these paintings from it. Mm. Um we were also in uh, Antrim one year when Ballycastle had its horse fair. And this is the horse fair from Ballycastle um, that I based on drawings that I did there. Um, these, are th these are oil paintings, by the way, big, quite big ones too. Um, uh, and then um, I began to move out of illustration, I, I suppose, when I... I lost my agent. She, sadly, she died. But I did. I did start moving into um, painting uh, tuition books for adults. So this comes from, um, I think, my book called Dynamic Watercolors. Um, I've also had a, a, a strong interest in in horses, um, and this is watercolor, and uh, really is 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 very much demonstrating how wet in wet works and, and, and splashing flicks of, of colour over the thing to increase. Because you're, when you're dealing with movement, particularly fast movement, you've got to somehow render that with actually, without actually outlining everything. So it's an exercise really in, in uh, wet in wet washes. Um, I, 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 I was lucky enough to teach a, a course in France, in Burgundy, um, uh, a, a holiday course. And we went to a, a local market town. And these are all those lovely, lovely white cattle, um, all in a line. And they were just they were just too good to miss. So I took some photographs and did a bit of drawing, but worked an oil painting from them. Um, mm lovely sort of French blokes at the background you know, with cigarettes hanging out <laughs> and stuff. But uh, I love these cows. They're beautiful. Um, I also paint flowers. Um, and these are, I, I put this in really because um, I, I had these flowers and wanted to paint them. But I, I, I often say to my students, try and try and, Try and see where your painting, where your flowers are. If you've got them in a vase, where they'd look best. And in fact, if you put them on the floor, which is what I did, you get more of the flowers than you do of the vase, which is the main thing, really. That you want the flowers. And so, by putting them on on um, the floor of my studio, they it it showed up the colour, I think, uh, more effectively. So it's always worth um, looking to see where if you're doing flowers and. and particularly in pots, in, in vases, you know, it's the flowers that are important. Um, so try and put them on the floor. Um, this is a study in this is, um, uh, an oil paint because I wanted to pick up the white of the flowers with the silver mug at the front. So it was an exercise really in painting quite pale colour and metal um, uh, together. And that was an oil painting. Um, these are some nasturtiums. Um, 
which just gorgeous, gorgeous colours uh, to work with. This one I love particularly because it's my grandson's little pet lamb, little toy lamb, and I, I love wildflowers, um, uh, and particularly things like dandelions and daisies um, because they're just, just lovely things uh, in their own right. Although my husband goes bananas when he sees them on the lawn, he's always picking out dandelions, much to my annoyance. Um, but you know, wildflowers also. <laughs> So sometimes the loveliest things. This is another oil painting. This little tiny oil uh, watercolor of um, a study in 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 uh, using one color. So these are mauves and purples, um, and and a ribbon to to which is sometimes quite useful because you can use the ribbon as a lead in to the to the rest of the painting. It's a compositional device really. I love atmosphere. This is a painting um, from a place called Vieira in, in North Holland, um, right up in Friesland. And it was a, a wonderful sort of April afternoon, foggy um, and, and cold, but just everything was, was almost one colour. Um, but this very soft. I think I'm mute. Excuse me, Linda. Sorry again. Could I ask, please, if you haven't muted your device, would you please do it? I'll have to switch off. It's mute. I don't have to mute it. So it should be. I have to mute. Right. Yeah. So, so this okay. is this is an old painting that I did. I did based on. Um, uh, this water side in North North Netherlands, and this is Paris. We stayed in a in a hotel once in Paris, and 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 when I looked out the window, all these people were up going up and down the, the middle of the street where there's a sort of boulevard with with um, with grass and stuff with their dogs, um, and they were just and they're just marching up and down with these dogs, and and it was spring, so there's these lovely sort of thin trees with little bits of leaves coming out. So it's quite a delicate thing. It's an oil painting. And that, oh, I, I, we went to Cornwall one year. And, and I mean, it's true what they say about the light in Cornwall. It's just stunning. This was Land's End, um, uh, which I sat on the cliffs and painted in watercolour first and then did an oil from it. And this is the last house in County Durham. <laughs> As you go up the hill through Weirdale over towards Alston, that is the last house that you see. And when we moved up to the north of England, the space and the skies and the, the fells are just take your breath away, really. It's taken me a long time to get used to the landscape because uh, it's bigger than me. Um, but very, very, very beautiful. Um, one of the things I'm interested in is contrajour light, and this is seeing things against the light. And these were sheep in a, a field. Um, this is an oil. Um, and the light was just tipping the, the edges of their backs. And uh, there's this lovely sort of bleached out yellow, um, really sort of cream colours coming through on the, on the fields beyond them. This is a little gouache done on um, brown paper. Um, if if you're a watercolorist, it's worth having a look at different different colors of paper to paint on. And um, this was a piece of stretched, just stretched brown paper. I think it was it might actually have been wrapping paper because I was like trying out new and different things really. Um, and I think it was wrapping paper, but uh, but it's a uh, gouache of Clavelli, um, quite a small picture actually, um, but it was a nice little place to visit. I love snow, and this is this was the view from our window when we lived in Kent um, uh, of melting snow. And if you look carefully, there's two cats in the picture. I now always put two cats in my picture. One is in the foreground, one's up underneath the, 
the bush in the garden um, as a sort of signature thing, really. Um, so there's always two little cats somewhere, but there are actually two cats in the picture, and that was the the star that ended up on TV is down in the in the foreground there, um, and the other cats underneath the bush. And this is another snow picture from up here. This is uh, just down the lane from where I live in the snow. I love the sweep of the the road as it goes over the bridge and the, the wonderful sort of trees covered in these beautiful colours of grey, blue greys and brown greys. Um, yeah, snow is one of my big things, really. And there it is again as the later afternoon the sun starts to go. These are these are oils, both of them. Um, <laughs> that's the view from my bedroom window uh, when it snowed a couple of winters ago. And um, that's my neighbour's house across the green. And somebody's walking their dog. Well, no, I won't say what the dog's doing. Um, <laughs> But uh, you'll see a little cat down in the foreground there. Uh, and that's an oil as well. This was um, a walk we did when it snowed um, a couple of years back. And all these sheep suddenly popped over their heads over the wall. I think they thought we'd come to feed them. But they were so funny, really, because they were obviously waiting and hoping that we might have bought a sack of food with this. Um, that I um, I did a painting from it, and there they all are, and that one's an oil as well. Um, but light and shade. Oh, sorry, I've gone on too far. Let me take you back a bit. Um, this is an oil of uh, it was a garden actually in Durham. It's St John's College um, where we stayed. I was staying. My husband was running a course. And I went into the garden and found this wonderful seat and this dappled light, which I just thought was just so beautiful. And with these white daisies, it was it was just waiting to be painted, really. And that's an oil as well. This is a pastel of Venice. Um, we were lucky enough to rent, be able to rent an apartment in, in Venice for a, for a while. And this is a pastel of the... The fondamenti. Um, I like pastel, but I can't bear the feel of it on my fingers. It, it actually, I find it quite uncomfortable, really. But it, it produces such quick effects, and it's such a, a pleasure to work with as far as the colour goes that I have to swallow my discomfort and just get on with it. And this is this is after a storm, and if you know Venice or been been to Venice, it, it is liable to storms. Um, and, and there'd been a cracker of a storm uh, before this, but it had rained and rained, and this wonderful reflection of light everywhere uh, in early evening with the lights um, in the distance was just waiting to be done, really. There's the usual one. Uh, it's a watercolour, this one, of uh, St Mark Square uh, with the rain and um, a bit of flooding as well, I guess. It's back to the snow again. This is a field just down from where we live um, with a moon in it, um, which, uh, again, it's back to my snow. Oh, there. <laughs> and this, this, one is, this one is the last one. This is a, quite a large watercolour, and it's of Christmas Eve in the, valley, in the village I live in. Um, and it's got everything in there. It's got uh, in the, you'll see the pub in the middle of the picture with lots of people having a nice time there. Um, but behind the pub, um, uh, in the distance, is a, a nativity really? with an angel above it. Um, and just down in the left hand corner is Father Christmas, who's arrived with his little reindeer just down on the left corner there. Yeah, and just on the, just on the right there is um, a house and that's our house and I think there's a cat down there somewhere, yes there is and and just on the right hand side of the picture is an angel appearing to the shepherds and he's got his little four by four though so it's a, it's a modern um, nativity but I did this as a Christmas card but it's actually a, quite a big watercolour painting 
So I think, yes, that's it. Yes, that's it. That's the last one. So um, I don't know if you want to ask me things or uh, what what you do after, after after these these after these talks, but I'm here and available for a conversation if necessary. Well, thank thank you very much for that, Linda. Um, that was an excellent presentation, even given the uh, the technicalities of it. Uh, I think you did extremely well, given that I think it's probably the first one you've done. Um, so, if anybody has any questions, now you'll have to unmute yourselves. Got it. Oh, well done. Well done. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, very, very good. Thank you. thank you. Can I say thank you to my very lovely Paul Ted, because he's, he's coached me through all this. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job, Ted. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Ted. Yes. We've yes. Never, we, we, so we, I'm open for questions if you need them. Looking straight at you. Now, did you do a quick sketch there and then, or did you take photographs? I or do. Or have both. you just got a brilliant memory? No, 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 no. I mean, you do have to train your memory a little bit, but um, oh. I took a photograph of the sheep. Uh, I did a very quick drawing in my sketchbook, but the, the, the thing is, particularly when you're working um, on, on animals, you know a little bit about the anatomy because that helps you to understand what you're seeing. Um, but mo mainly that actually came from a photograph, but with some colour notes and uh, small bits of detail. But it was so cold, I, c I couldn't draw for long. Um, but, but if you understand a little bit about the animal's anatomy, that, that really does help. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Linda? Yeah? When you do pen and wash... Do you yes. do the wash first or the pen or a bit of both? <laughs> well, funny you should say that. I'm working on an article for Leisure Painter at the moment. because Oh, yes. Um, and it's about line and wash. Any more questions, folks? I'm very impressed with the range. I think it was wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. stunning. And your oil paintings are just stunning. Um, <laughs> I enjoy that too. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that there was so much character in it. It wasn't, they weren't all painted exactly the same. Everything had a character. The village had a character. The sheep had a character. Everything had a different character. And I loved that about your work. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. much. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Mm -hmm. a, a lady of many talents, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Such a big range of, of pictures and yeah, mind blowing. <laughs> yes, it was like it was lovely to see that you use all different mediums. Yeah. So. Yes, yes. Well I mean I teach different media too. Yeah. So I, and it's it's nice to be an explorer. Yeah. And try different media too. So yeah. Super. Yeah. Fabulous work. Good. <laughs> I'm disappointed that you don't do more in pastel because your pastel painting was was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it's a shame that you don't like the feel of it. Well, I, I have to kind of, I have to get over that, but it's not my natural go-to medium. That's all I'll say, really. Um, but yes, I mean, it, it, the effects that you get are so strong and vibrant that... Um, have you tried wearing thin rubber gloves? Yeah. Very I cool. <laughs> Lynn, Lynn, if you yeah. introduce Linda to your very expensive French pastel, she might be um, she might overcome her resistance. <laughs> Which well, ones? I don't know that the price very, might very make expensive. her pass out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I I did a pastel course earlier in the summer at um, Higham Hall. And I ended up with bleeding fingers. Yes. <laughs> and yes. I was bleeding everywhere. And then yeah. they told me to go and get these little caps that you can get in boots, ah. everybody. Were just... you working on a very rough paper? A, a, yes, it was sandpaper. Sand yeah. I didn't realise. Yeah. And she said, oh, it's yeah. sandpaper. <laughs> and I ended yeah. up with blood everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know that you can use pipe insulation you can cut pieces of pipe insulation into very small bits and then you can just blend with that. Your yes. fingers must have I've been agony. Some. 
They were. <laughs> oh dear. Good. Okay. Well, you've been a jolly good audience. <laughs> well, it was lovely. It was really lovely. Great idea. Mm. Mm. Thanks yes. for inviting us. Mm. Yes, yes, thank you. Linda, and thank you, Ted. Yes. For, yes. And, and Fran, wherever she is. And, and, and Peter, who... Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, Peter came in on my first rehearsal, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, very grateful. It's been lovely. Lovely. Good. Well, I'll yeah. see you again sometime, <laughs> no doubt. Well, well, I, mean, I don't know whether, Linda, yeah. um, I don't know whether you realise it, but actually on the screen, you've got quite a few of your pupils in your I Am All art class. Oh, one of whom, oh yes. And I thank know. you very much for enjoying it. My still life is upstairs waiting to be finished. <laughs> really? Oh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm doing um, a course at um, Higham next month with my husband. We do a, a painting retreat, which is quite interesting. So it's linking up um, things that he does about painting and theology and stuff like that, but with what I'm doing. So, oh, good. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. No doubt I'll see some of you at Hyam. Which was yeah. the village, may I ask you, diverting off slightly, in Sorry. Kent? I, I just wondered which was your village in Kent. E a place called Elam, near Canterbury. Mm -hmm. Ah. Lovely. No, my, uh, the my cousin was at, had five parishes uh, near Bredger. At where? Bredger, Bredger Frinstead. He had, ah. There was a group of parishes there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, um, this was one of a group of three. It's now eight, I think. <laughs> yeah, a bit more than that. It's now. Hello, dear. Hello. Okay, folks. This cat oh. joined in. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's an appropriate time now for us to bring the meeting to a conclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Given, given the fact that uh, it's... The, if not the first time, one of the first times that we've tried anything like this. Yeah. And certainly it's a new medium for Linda too. And uh, I thought she did extremely well. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yes. So give her a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Linda, I'll be in touch with you by email. Okay, okay Ted, and thanks yeah. again. And, and if, if ever you put another presentation together, We'd be really interested to have a look at it. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 so with that, folks, we'll close down for the afternoon. We'll okay. See you in a fortnight's time. Bye. 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 B